Okay, hello, and welcome to episode 9. Uh, hopefully you can hear me better now. <laughs> I've invested in this, uh, the new microphone system as promised, uh, the Rode Wireless Go um, 2. So, uh, so hopefully you can hear me better now, as I say. I haven't done much fiddling with the volumes, or, uh, oh, oh, let's put this up a little bit, there we go, because um, there is an app you can get for this where you can adjust um, levels, volume pans and etc, etc, so uh, I haven't done that yet, so I've done a couple of tests, it seems okay as it is, I think, uh, but do let me know if you think it's too... Uh, too loud or too harsh or something and I should download the app and see if I can, I can fiddle with so it's working out of the box at the moment anyway uh, it's just it's... oh I pressed stop then by accident <laughs> um, so episode 9 what are we doing today well we're going to Bedwin today a bit like we did in episode 7 um, on the rail replacement shift to Thiel except we're going on to Reading today um, but this isn't a week's worth, it's just a day, and the aim of this uh, episode is basically to cover the bit from the yard in the morning up to Bedwin. Um, but we might do Hungford as well, if there's no one on, we'll, uh, we'll see how we get on. Um, the, other idea, the, blah, blah. the other idea is um, that we'll use the POV cam, like I did in the test, um, so that'll give you a good idea of what we can what I can and can't see, it's uh, dark outside, it's uh, 3 in the morning, so um, I'll give you a perspective. Also, we're in a different coach as well. Uh, my Turismo is off the road, so we're in this Irizar today, um, which is a Spanish coach, powered with a DAF engine. Um, so, just have, you've seen my Turismo a few times now, so you've seen a different coach today. So. Um, we'll crack on in a minute, um, I think we, we might do a walk around check actually with this camera, again we'll, we'll just s cover the basics, um, slightly different coach but again the process is the same, we'll uh, test the lift as well, um, so yeah let's crack on with that. Okay, right, uh, we're going to start at the front, as I said before there's no right or wrong way of doing this. Um, We'll test, we'll look at the start, we'll go around in a sort of anti-clockwise direction. Just checking the mirrors there that they're secure. Headlights, the indicators, headlights and fog lights work. So for both sides. Number plate is visible, very clearly. Um, windscreen, all there, no cracks, nothing major on the screen there. We've got our green O-license just there, which must always be displayed. We're secure as well, that's good. Um, checking the legals there, and I don't know what I haven't got is my hat because that's in the other coach, and I'm not gonna go over and get that now. So, use my phone torch, there we go, that's better. Right, tire treads, uh, it's definitely over one mil, that's really enough tread in there. There's no leaks or anything hanging down underneath the wheel arch. Should or shouldn't be. Uh, wheel nuts all there. Let's just get the shadow of the camera out of the way. <laughs> there you can see as well. Anyway, the tire condition uh, is good. Yep. Okay, mark lights. All the mark lights are fine. Side windows, all there. There's no, uh, just big damage to the panels and all that has fallen off, falling down. The two rear tyres as well. Hold on a minute. Oh, this back screen keeps coming off and then I can't see what you can see. Oh. Sorry about that. Right. Tire trace in the back is good as well. Some hanging down underneath there. Oh well, that's all good. There's no rust marks. On the outside, it suggests that they've been moving. And again, tire condition 
no uh, cracks, no bulges, no uh, pores showing. It's all good. The lights all there. Right, right to the back. See that the hazards are on. And the rear fogs, which are the two lower red lights. Uh, that's the fogs there. That's the running lights and the indicator in between. And the two number plate lights below, shown white. So they work, so that's good. In condition of the body work, we're looking at as well. Just, uh, you know, basically seeing if that's hanging off. Um, if you caught that, or if it's not shut properly, it's all fine. Ties the side as well. All good. Got the middle door open because I'm using that to go in and out the coach. That also works. <laughs> good way of testing that as well. Also, the only reason if you come out that door, not the front door, is because it keeps the uh, warmth in the front. Don't let all this cold air in. Uh, stop too cold but it's uh, you know it's cold enough put it that way <laughs> okay yeah check the tiles there that's all good as well satisfied with that right let's turn this torch off for a minute okay so that's that done uh, lift works fine so, what I'm going to do now is um, take everything off in the book, do a quick checking inside, um, lock up, and then uh, we'll get going. So, I shall see you shortly. Okay, right. So, we are off. First thing I'm going to do is uh, back up a little bit, give us some room. Okay, so um, this coach is a the gearbox, it's a ZF um, Eco Life, I think it's called. Um, basically, it's a automatic manual. So there is no clutch pedal. So for me, it's just a you know two two pedal foot brake and accelerator. Um, so it changes gear, it does the clutch itself, it's a fully working clutch, you can hear it as you go along, you can hear there's a sort of two seconds gap where it's changing gear, it's got 12 gears, um, in automatic it skips, generally skips gears, you start off in gear 3 and then it tends to go sort of, uh, what is it, 3, 5, six and then after then it just depends it either goes seven eight uh nine ten or might jump um, it tends to try and figure out what the conditions are so if you're on a hill if it detects that you're going to do a hill start it will start on gear two rather than gear three um but down here there's a button on the side of a stalk actually i forgot to show you that before we set off um, but there's a button on the side there, which means I can put it into manual, so I can do the gears myself. So um, today we'll be doing both. We're going to drive in automatic and manual. There's a couple of scenarios where I'm going to show you why, um, where, sorry, we'd use manual. So it's gone into gear eight. Um, I don't know if you can see much I'm looking down. I don't know what you can see there, but it's just on the top left of this uh, screen. There is a number. It says eight and A. 
that means it's in gear 8 and it's in automatic. If I press the button now, it would be into manual. Also on this stock is the retarder as well. It's just a three-step uh, notch retarder. A bit different to mine where I've got about six or seven notches. This has only got three. And we've got to remember that this the mirrors stick out a little bit more than on my coach, my Turismo. Let's put some high beam on. There we go. See the road clearly now. So it's always a thing when you're driving um, coaches, that, uh, especially if you've got a fleet of different models, it's remembering what you drive, what length is, and uh, if there's any anything different like this, as I say, with the mirrors are slightly bigger than what I'm used to. I haven't driven this in quite some time, actually. <laughs> So I've been driving my Turismo for so long, you just get used to it. Um, but as many of you know, uh, I did my test in 20... Hang on. Uh, 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 20, 20? Yes, it was. It was only couple of months, might have just been just a month actually before lockdown so um, it put me through my test. I was driving around a little bit and then lockdown happened and then I didn't drive for sort of you know best part of eight months. Um, but this is the exact coach that I did my testing funnily enough. So I should know it inside out really. <laughs> it down onto notch one, down to notch two. I'm going to use the road here. I'm going to swing it to the left. Use both lanes because then I can just uh, clear that curb. Then, if I stay to the right, then the rear wheel would be climbing up that curb. I don't know if you can see in the mirrors, um, the white dot at the back there. I don't know if you can see it in either one of them, to be honest, but that's the that's the rear marker light. So it gives me a gauge of where my um, rear corners are, left and right. And that's clear. Not much traffic out. And again, you know, it is four in the morning on a Friday. Uh, Saturday, sorry. <laughs> Even I'm still half awake. <laughs> I forget what day it is. speed now 40 mile an hour but we've got 40 coming up so there's not too much point putting the uh, accelerator down oh, been down as we come up to West Ashton crossroads the traffic lights coming up now the red so I'm gonna dip the beam down a minute just in case something comes up no no lights are sent to me I'm gonna keep the Beams down now. I don't need them in a minute because we've got um, street lights there, and I can just see through the trees. There's something what looks like a lorry coming up. There it is. Right. So let me find the. Uh, that one, let's turn that off actually. So there they are. 
just turning the heated mirrors on uh, electrically operated um, looks like we've got a bit of mist that's hit the mirrors there not knocking my view out too much just yet I think they're just about to kick in now I've got my blind side mirror there that I can see clearly out of on my right hand side Okay, different lights down now. We've got street lights around about as well, so we don't need the full beam. And it's handy just in case like that a vehicle comes down. We've got the dip beam down already. Okay, I'm gonna use the roundabout here. There's just nothing on the side of me. I'm gonna use the road so I'm not climbing this curb as we bear around to the right. Just tucking that wheel around, just keeping on that mirror. Looking at where the tire is. Checking the blind spot, nothing's trying to undertake me. further down the road now um, this is an example I'm going to show you in a minute we'll just put the retarder on a notch just to bring our speed down off this bend now coming up here is a slight incline it's just past this bridge and it's this point we usually put the coach into manual but um, as we haven't got anything behind us I'm going to show you why we use manual I'm going to purposely leave it in automatic and then it's going to prove me wrong. <laughs> okay, so we come around the spin now. It's in gear eight. Uh, no, it's in gear nine, sorry. Usually we bring it down to eight and then I press manual. I'm going to just leave it now. We're climbing up. We're going to do this right hand bend. Bring it down. There we go. And as you can see, it's bringing the speed down. We're down to 20 mile an hour now. And it's kicks down to gear six. struggling now it's trying to think what's going on it's just driving those bumps and there we are and it's slowly coming up to 30 mile an hour now it's back into gear nine now so you can see i've left it in automatic and it's just realized that there's an incline there and it's brought me down to 20 mile an hour and it's brought the as i say it's brought the um gearbox down to gear six um which isn't really necessary uh i've had people on that probably go down a bit more maybe 15 mile an hour and all that's going to do is annoy the cars behind <laughs> um, so as I say what we do there is if I put that into manual as I say I press this button on the right hand side and leave it into gear 8 and then it will push the coach up it will keep the speed up at um, you know an average uh, 40 45 possibly even 50 um, but it certainly won't bring it down to 20 because I'm holding that gear down at uh, 8. So it's not going to go down and it's not going to bring the speed down. So the only reason the speed goes down is because it's changing down the gear itself. Okay, into it seemed now. This is where we've got the pinch point in the road coming up there shouldn't be too much traffic coming up now there is a sensor there that says there's oncoming vehicles ahead but that wasn't lit but we take it with ease anyway village now seems just coming up to the traffic lights at the bottom joining the road from Melksham we're going to do right here so bring the speed down now using the retarder not using the brakes down to the 
so notch so we're going to turn that off now because that's becoming ineffective using the foot brake now and put it into neutral okay foot brake on into drive it's gone into gear three automatically because we're in auto Gear five, gear seven, into gear nine. As you can see, it's skipping uh, every other gear. Imagine it's going to go into 10. Yep, there we go. The only time it usually uses the top um, 12th gear is when we're at uh, 60, 62 mile an hour top cruise speed otherwise if we're just driving at 50 mile an hour it's, it's just between 10 and 11 it's gone up now to 11th gear now to dip beam now it's got street lights and there'll be a car coming past and you make it now there it is Okay, we're going uphill into devices, so um, it's not actually bringing the speed down, it's not that steep. And I'm not taking my foot off the accelerator, so I'm um, keeping the speed nicely, but I'm easing off now because we've got 30 mile an hour at the top of this hill. So I don't need the retarder or the brakes, so I can just bring it down using the hill to uh, slow me down a bit, just easing off the accelerator just a bit more and keeping it off keeping it half throttle now there we go that brings me down to 30 nicely oh now things fogged up again Into devices now. Uh, the town itself is straight on, that's towards the marketplace. We're going to do left here. I'm going to bring it around to the right a little bit, use both lanes. So I'm just avoid clipping the curb then on the left hand side. Same again here.
that should be clear. Yep. So much easier driving through divisors at uh, half four in the morning. <laughs> Sadly, it does get busy. This is the London Road, uh, the main road out to Marlborough and uh, east. Anything coming from the M4, for example, I might come off at Hungford using the A4 down to here. Um, there's all sorts of routes, Swindon. Um, yeah, various places down the, um, uh, the A4, Newbury, um, so yeah, it's, it's, and local places in between, so it's, it's a busy road. It does usually get quite clogged up um, back there, and uh, gets clogged up along here in the peak hours as well, on our weekdays. But come down at this time in the morning, uh, you guarantee to sail through. Coming this way later on because I've got a crew change at uh, midday, um, so I'll be taking the car back, the fleet car back to the depot to pick my own car up. So I'll be coming this way. It's going to take me probably a little bit longer to get through devices coming back than it is uh, going there this morning. Okay, coming to Marlborough now. Go through the uh, centre, to High Street. So it will be very busy, as I say. It's uh, <laughs> the daytime. This will be uh, much busier later on. I think after Marlborough we'll um, skip straight to Bedwin as well. I was, uh, oh, sorry, didn't realise, didn't expect to see the uh, market people today. Uh, didn't realise it was on on a Saturday, actually. Oh, there we go. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll do the climb out of Marlborough and then we'll uh, skip to Bedwin. I was going to sort of cover the whole run between Marlborough and Bedwin um, but because I've sort of covered the whole run between Westbury and Devizes I'm going to cut it just to conserve some battery just want to dip in the roundabout nice keep it on that back wheel Follow the curve of the road there. Now we can do left this roundabout.
it's just about to start the climb now so I'm going to press the button on the right there so you can see well it says 9M there so that means I'm in manual now I've got control I can see it's fine in a minute because on my uh, rev counter, we're still in the green, we're just over 10,000 revs in ninths. As I come up now, I can just flick the uh, paddle down one, that brings me down to gear eight. It's done just like a, a kick down then. But in manual, I can only select each gear. I can't do what it does in automatic. I can't um, pick and choose uh, skipping gears. So we'll keep it in eighths, because I think if I change down now, it's just going to bring the speed down. But the, the refs, they're still in green, on 1500 now. Let's come to the top, I can flick it up. To ninth. I'll keep it in ninth for a minute. Because it's useful slightly as a bit of a sort of engine brake, keeping the revs up there for that bit. Flip the paddle up once, that brings me to 10th. Up one more, into 11, press the button, back into automatic, there we go. Then here we are at the station. These parked cars, and if you remember it from last time, there's a row of parked cars here, they seem to have gone. That's good, someone's put some cones out. So I don't know if um, they've realised it's not such a good idea to park the cars there when a very good placement is on. <laughs> a little bit early, not too early though, but uh, pretty quiet here. Right, this is where we're going to turn around, but but someone's parked their car there. Uh, right. Nothing parked down there. Should be doable. Right, you won't see much, but I can just see the white line of the curb. Um, behind there, I can just see the car as well. So I'll follow the contour of the white line with the back wheel, and I'm losing it already. There it is, one to my front, I can just see the front with the spotlight there. Loads of room, that's fine. There's a sign as well, that's over there as well. That's good. Keeping on that car anyway, just in case we nosed over and realised it too much. Yeah, that's fine. You see the white line, I'm quite a distance away from it actually. I didn't follow that round too well. But we've got ourselves in the middle of the road, so that's okay. Well, that's where we want to be, because we don't want to be too close to the left. I know behind will be a lot of parked cars because I've already checked that. Back into drive. I'm going to stop following roughly where that back wheel is now. Making sure that follows that white line. We'll clear that car there. Steering lock a little bit. There we go. That should do. Um, 
I should put myself down here, I think. Yeah, I'll use the space out here, outside the entrance. Okay, there we go. Right, I might do a coverage to Hungford later on. Um, if it's quiet, if, if I can't do this people on, then uh, then we won't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then otherwise I shall um, skip to the wrapping up video so I shall wrap the video up later on anyway so um, until then speak to you later on okay right I think I've got everything set up I think I've just plugged the mic in properly so hopefully you can hear me again um, Right, so we're, we're done reading, we're going back to Bedwin now and we're just leaving Hungerford. So we've got no one on, so as promised, if I didn't have anyone on, I'd uh, cover the route at least one way between Hungerford and Bedwin. The fun part, I mean, you don't need to see the rest of the route anyways, it's all down A road, so this is always the, the tricky part, like here. And the sludge is jolting, so I'm sort of having to fall up here. That hissing, that's the door interlock. That's just something that happens as you get below five miles an hour or three miles an hour, I think it is, is one of the two that the uh, door interlock releases. Well, oh, hopefully you can see right, hopefully it's not too angled. Obviously I've, I've got the um, GoPro on a, a cap, so I can't really see what your view is like. Blind spot here. Oh. All right, so there we go. All right, off to Bedwin. So it's been a pretty quiet day actually so far. I had many passengers on. I think I've had about 15 in total, possibly. Uh, my first one out of Bedwin at 5:20 this morning is pretty much predicted. There wasn't anyone on. Uh, I had one on to Newbury. Had about five on from Newbury. And then Satcham picked up another five. No one at Thiel. And uh, that was it. it. Took about the you know the ten passengers, fifteen or whatever it was, onwards to uh, Reading. You might remember these from the last episode. They're still here. Roadworks. Right, climbing up out of Hungerford, maximum 30 mile an hour. It should pretty much climb up here, all right, I would have thought. Just easing off now in case someone comes charging up this uh, roundabout. It's all fine, it's all clear. Obviously, you can probably uh, see in the mirrors now as well. Now it's daylight. <laughs> I can see a bit better as well. <laughs> yeah. right, so one roundabout coming up now, so uh, hovering over the retarder. There we go, notch one, notch two, which brings us down nicely. Use the curbs, stones, no point trying to go around the concrete bit there. wheel round that curb and we're going to accelerate too much still in the 30 for a little bit and then we come into the 60 zone mirrors are coming the other way so let's mind these mirrors as well yeah 
Yeah, you know, some people at Hungford waiting for a uh, coach to Reading. I haven't turned up, so that must be him there. So that's all right then. Hopefully they'll get on their on their way. It's good news for me because I know now he's cleared the sketchy narrow lane through Bedwin. <laughs> So providing there's no one else down there running excessively late, I should be fine. The only problem I've got to watch out for now is uh, any hordes of traffic cars that might be coming down that way. You get a good view uh, down this road, it's nice and scenic. If you like the scenery around here. Pheasant. Be down a little bit for these bends. I mean, it'd be okay if I knew the road was clear, but I can't see around them, so I'm gonna ease it off. Just easing it around here. So I'm bringing it down to 40. Yeah, that's nice. The speed we want around there. down the dip and then we'll be climbing back up the hill over there. T11, just press the button there to put it into manual. We bring it down to get 10. Might get away with that actually. Just keeping on the revs, just keeping it in that green zone down there. As long as it's in the green, it's fine. Red's too high, so if you drop below that, you're losing power and you might want to kick down again. But uh, if I left that in auto, that would have kicked down um, not to gear nine, that probably would have ended up in gear seven, gear six. But by the time it's done that, we would have lost speed as well. So. So I think I just caught myself shouting then, just forget the fact I've got the microphone down here. <laughs> so if I just blasted your ears apart there. Right, junction coming up now, so... Uh, just downshift it to ninth. Using the engine brake. Put it into auto now. On that tree there. Right, so I'm just trying to see if anything's coming down the road. Oh, I can see now. Oh, okay. Oh, my. There we are. Right, we've got to be an alert now for any cars flying around the corners. Also looking out for things like this, like trees, overhanging um, branches, 
parts of the tree that could be sticking out that was easily going to whack that mirror as you can see it's, as I was saying earlier the um, difference of this is the mirrors are bigger and they stick out compared to mine so it's just watching out for the trees I'm not going to smash the mirror off because uh, you know, it's not a cheap replacement in these big mirror arms you know it's a, nearly a thousand pound for a whole replacement unit harder on one notch just to keep the speed down just hovering over the brake just in case I need to use the brakes to stop quickly then over here I can see that tree was sticking out I don't think that would have been a problem but uh, it's better to be safe than sorry especially as there's you know, cars coming the other way it's just an hour a bit right here we go we've got a car here so just gonna slow down there. That's fine, I can make that. There we go, keep that gap close to the edge, keeping that car. That's fine, perfect. Just what was there, not here. that pinch point out of the way luckily it meet a car or another coach there I'm sure I will later on it's bound to happen <laughs> it just happened last time on that rover replacement shift and we did it for a week there was a couple of awkward um, pickup trucks that I met right in that narrow part nearly back at Bedwin Station. We're bringing the speed down because 40 is a bit too much in a coach to be honest. There's trees up there, that's fine. Put your clearance there. Keeping it 30, that gives me time to break, i.e. there's a good example there. If it was at 40, that would have been more awkward to slow down, so keeping that speed down when you've got a blind bend like that reduces your um, braking distance. Right, has so he found a space? Yep, yeah, that's good, okay. So that car was coming on map, I was just immediately trying to scan any places that I could pull in or he could pull in, but he's found a space. Keep it at 20 here, we're going to go slowly over this first bridge. See it's clear, so that's good. What we don't want to do is go too fast that we ground out. So the uh, bike's waiting for me, that's good. That road still clear? Oh, it is. That's good. Those cars still aren't there. I 
Right, so we did what we did last time, turn around at the end by that car that's still there at the junction. But you can see the process now in the daylight, so you should be able to see uh, more clearly um, how I do the procedure and uh, how I try to make this turn. So daylight, there might be cars coming along, so we put the hazards on. Hands that over, give us some room, coming at an angle. Looking for that back wheel to start and roughly where that curve is. Uh, the curve of the white line there. Chicken all round. Start the turn. Keeping on my front corner, mind. I've got the front corner mirror up there, I can see. That's hovering over the curb, so that's okay. I just don't want to hit the fence. So I'm just using that white line there, just trying to guide my back wheel around that uh, white line. Let's check where that car is. That's over there. That's fine. A bit too tight on that curve there. I did overcook that a little bit. Okay, there we are. Extra drive. Ideally, I'd like to park with that. Um, BMW was out the way. Um, I can't get in there. This is off a minute, so I think I'm going to park. Um, yeah, I'll park where we was. Really one that should do. Let's tuck it in a bit. Right, that's going to backwards. So some room to get out and it will stop anyone parking behind me when I want to go backwards to shunt out. Yeah, that should do that. Right, there we go. Right, I must shoot you. Do that for us. And I'll shoot uh, you later on. Okay, a couple of things I thought I'd show you. One is um, what I was talking about, the, the gear stick I was going to show you earlier. I completely forgot. But then it was dark, so you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. <laughs> um, this is the uh, gear stick and retarder I was talking about in um, talk about throughout this video. Um, so that's the retarder one, two, and three, and then obviously you just go up back, and that's off. So that's the uh, three-step retarder, and uh, on the side here, and this is the um, automatic manual switch. So there's the button on the side. You could press that, hold it in. You wait for the M to come on on the dashboard, which come up on the on the corner there, when the engine's on, it will show you the gear number there. Um, so if it's in A or M, so that was switched to M. And then if I want it to go up, I just flick it up like that. And then to go down the gear, just press it down. So it's, you know, you flick up through the gears like that, and then flick down through the gears like so. And, uh, this is the schedule today. As you can see, we've started at 5:20 through Tangford, Newbury, Thatcham, Thiel, Reading. They're at, uh, well, it's due there at 6.53, it's a bit of slack in the timetable at least, so I've got there at 6.50, plus it was pretty clear with the traffic. <laughs> um, left there at 7.40, slipping beyond time then, just because it's a tight timetable and by the time you've hit a couple of red lights, that's it, you've had it pretty much. Um, I haven't updated the, oh, hang on. Yeah. I haven't updated the times here yet, but uh, 9.10... Um, what did you get here? I think it was a couple of minutes late on that to be honest. Um, but yeah, so drew out now at 9.50, another round trip. Um, back to Reading, drew that 11.21, only a short turn over there though, leaving there at 11.40, back to here, and that's it, finish at 10 past 1. Uh, I'll have a car then, to, I should take the car back to the depot company car and then the other driver then takes over and uh, basically it's just same again Reading to Bedwin, Bedwin to Reading until 
Reckon we've got 2150 from Bedwin to Reading. Got past 11 roughly tonight at Reading. And then 20 past 12 in the morning, tomorrow morning, midnight 20. All stations to Newbury, except they're all set downs. So that means, um, well, what it says on the tin really, um, you're not actually calling all stations to pick up. So when the driver's on it later on, I just have to say who's going where, if anyone, of course. Um, if there's one just in Newbury, then you just has to go straight to Newbury. You don't have to do Reading, West, the old, old Master and all that. That's only if people are actually getting off there. So, uh, yeah, so it'd be interesting to know, actually, what he ends up doing. It could end up running empty, you know. But, uh, yeah, so that's the schedule. Pop that back over there. All right, there we go. All right, so I can have a quick bite to eat and then uh, set off to Reading. See you later on. Hello. Today is Tuesday, the 11th of April, uh, a few days after the episode 9. Um, there's one reason. Um, <laughs> I'll come to that in a minute. One, I was just going to mention that the thumbnail picture for this uh, episode is a generic picture of CT15, uh, one picture that I've got. Um, it, I was supposed to take a picture of one either Reading or Bedwin, and I completely forgot, so that's why there's a generic photo. <laughs> and two, uh, it's to wrap up this video. <laughs> so I'm in the uh, Chandler's, one of our vetoes, the eight-seater, I'm just doing tour feeders today, um, taking people back from the holiday, taking them home. Um, as we do door-to-door -door service So there's two coaches come back today one from Kent one from Jersey. I've just uh, done the Jersey one So I'm just in between the jobs now um, waiting for the Kent one to come back So I thought I'd bring my GoPro along and uh, do the wrapping up video for episode 9 The reason for that is I completely forgot um, To wrap it up because I'm a dingbat. That's why <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I was, I was going to do it at Bedwin, um, and then I well, forgot, so I thought, well, I'll do it at Reading, because I've got 20 minutes there. Um, well, my 20 minute turnaround at Reading turned into a 2 minute turnaround, so that went out the window. Um, by the time I got back to Bedwin, uh, the driver was waiting for me, he was taken over, so I was on the way back to the yard uh, in the car, and then I thought, oh, I haven't wrapped up the video yet, I thought, I better do that when I get back to the yard. And then I forgot again, because I was in going home mode, so I completely forgot altogether until I got home and thought, oh well, <laughs> I'll do it on the Tuesday instead. So this is the wrapping up video. <laughs> um, the day went alright, uh, numbers wise wasn't too busy, um, a little bit busy on the 950s Bedwin up to Reading, but that was it to be honest. Uh, the times over went well out the window. Um, so, as I say, my two minute turnaround at Reading was because I left Hungford just about on time, and well, that was it then. The times I was well out the window because there was an Aldi on the A4 who decided to do 40 and a 60 all the way to Newbury. Um, so, there's no chance of getting past him. So, that knocked me into Newbury late, and then after Newbury to Thatcham, there's uh, quite a, about 15 sets of traffic lights, I think, and every single one of them was red, so that knocked me back. Getting to Thiel, you couldn't recover time, um, so I was late there, and then Thiel to Reading, again, every single traffic light, crossing, junction lights, the lot, everything was red, so that knocked me back a hell of a lot of time, into Reading for a two minute turnaround, back to Bedman again, <laughs> so yeah, that was that day, um, anyway, hope you enjoyed it, hope the POV camera was alright, um, looks like oh, I haven't really looked at it yet while I'm recording this but I had a quick look at the um, night and day footage so it looks all right so I hope you like it and hope the audio was okay as well um, please let me know in the comments what you thought of uh, the POV camera and the audio so until then I'll uh, see you on the next episode don't know what episode 10 will be yet but um, it'll just be something I decide near the time like and subscribe for more of these videos. Till then, see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.